By the end of the 13th century, this burgeoning Pisan influence eventually passed into the hands of their now rival republic, Genoa. However, both the Pope and the King of Aragon made claims upon the island, which saw it become the subject of continual feudal wrangling and conflict. By the turn of the 15th century, disgruntled locals began turning on their foreign claimants, and a number of popular uprisings signalled the emergence of a distinct Corsican national consciousness. Their troubles only continued, however, as Barbary pirate raids from the south were punctuated only by Spanish and French conflicts that often took place in the region. The French regularly did deals with the Ottomans, who aided their raids on Spanish holdings, to the great resentment of the Christian population. The Corsican nobility sought the protection of the Genoese, who aided them in repelling the Franco-Ottoman menace and established a string of fortifications around the island. However, the Genoese were now themselves heavily in debt and levied substantial taxes upon the Corsican population for its ongoing defence. To add insult to injury, Corsican nobles were now largely excluded from administrative and leadership positions in the local government, which fueled their growing resentment, ongoing dissent, and eventually, in 1729, outright rebellion against Genoa in a war of independence that in 1755 saw the establishment of the Republic of Corsica under the leadership of Pasquale Paoli. This revolutionary republic was founded upon Enlightenment principles with a representative government, constitution, enfranchisement of women who had full voting rights and participation in public life. Paoli's vision of independence, democracy and liberty would go on to inspire European intellectuals like Voltaire, Rousseau and others that would directly influence the course of European and American history. However, the new republic was unable to completely wrest the island from the hands of the Genoese, who still held several key fortresses. In a political turnaround, the Genoese, effectively bankrupt and unable to hang on much longer, requested aid from the French, against whom they had themselves fought for control of the island not that long ago. The French, devastated after their recent defeat in the Seven Years' War, with their resulting colonial dispossessions and still harbouring designs on Corsica, were only too happy to march their troops in and reinforce the Genoese. The British, desperate to deny the French any further outposts in the Mediterranean and thus future headaches for themselves, quietly poured money and resources to the aid of the Corsican Republic. The French eventually sidelined the Genoese, while at the same time charging them for the costs of their protection and racking up an impossible debt for the Genoese to repay. This effectively forced them to cede Corsica to France as payment, whereupon they were quickly themselves expelled while the French rolled up their sleeves to sort out the rebels once and for all, settling old scores in the process. So it was that in 1767, the French began an offensive across the whole island, against which the Corsicans desperately fought in both open and guerrilla battles. After fighting the Genoese for over 40 years, now exhausted, hugely outnumbered and outgunned, after another year of fighting the French, the last battalions of the Corsican army, comprised of both women and men, made their last stand and were mowed down by French line infantry at the Battle of Ponte Novo. The cause being lost, Paoli fled to Britain and became a celebrity, as well as, privately at least, renouncing his republican ideals and warming to the virtues of monarchy, from whom he received a nice pension. By 1770, Corsica was a province of France. 